as we begin to break down the cycle graph, we're going to leave the animation up so you can see the stage of the process that the press is in. Um, however, to make this easier, we're going to introduce these curves one at a time. So we'll start by removing uh, all of the curves except for one. And the curve we're going to leave showing is the stroke or the screw position curve. So the stroke curve is one that many molders will recognize uh, because it's shown on their own presses. However, the, the curve that we show is flipped from the way it's usually shown on the press. The reason for that, if we look at the screw position, on most presses, the graph is shown in terms of the screw position, where zero is the bottom, and the shot size is a large number. So in this, on most presses, the graph starts at a large value, injects forward to a small value, and returns to a large value. And that's the opposite of what we're starting with here. We're starting at a small value, increasing to a large value, and then as we build our shot, we're turning to a small value. And so you say, why do we do this? Well, the difference is that we're looking at this from the plastics point of view, and we're trying to see how much plastic has been pushed into the mold. So this dashed line here actually represents zero position. That's the point where the screw was when the shot size was reached. Uh, so, and we're, what we're looking at is how much plastic has been pushed into the mold. And so that's the fundamental difference, the fundamental reason why we flip that curve. Uh, the other thing you'll notice on here with this being the zero position is that the screw comes back to a point below zero. And that's actually showing decompression. As at the end of screw recovery, we build the shot, the screw pulls back just a little bit, and we're able to see on the curve uh, what, the, uh, what the decompression setting is. So then, at the start of the cycle, we'll notice during filling that the curve moves forward very fast. This is the, the filling phase, followed by pack and hold, where we're holding and compressing material in the cavity. And as the screw recovers, we can see the screw recovery stage of the process. I'm going to go ahead and save a template. that at, at, at the end of the cycle will show a dashed curve and will allow us to see uh, what the process looks like uh, when it's running in its normal state. Give it just one moment. And now we can see the solid curve represents the, uh, the current process and the, uh, the, the dashed line shows where the process should be. So let's see how this can be useful. Let's change the screw recovery speed. So our fill speed remains the same, our hold remains the same, but as we get to the end of screw run, we'll notice that it's taking much longer for the, uh, for the screw to recover, and that's because we've reduced our screw recovery speed. In addition, if we change the fill speed, we'll take a moment and wait for the next cycle. Again, we see the screw is still recovering slow. When the fill speed changes, we can see it takes longer for the screw to reach its position, uh, reach transfer position. Well, we can actually zoom in on that section by clicking 
and dragging. Now we're looking from zero to about two seconds. We can see where the process was running before and where it's running now at, it, at its slower fill speed. The main differentiation that we can see is that our fill time before was something close to here and now it's taking this, this long to fill. So that gives an overview of some of the types of things that we can see on the, the, the stroke curve or the screw position curve and how we can use it to determine whether the process is running whether where it should be or not.